Hi, I'm Emily Morgan. And I'm Karen Hansberry. Welcome to our webinar, Exploring Robots Remotely, where we will be sharing one of our picture-perfect STEM lessons that we've adapted for remote learning. At the end of this session, you will receive a link to a Padlet that contains the complete lesson plan and resources for adapting the lesson for virtual learning. Every video, link, and resource we discuss is on the Padlet. Karen and I are both from the Cincinnati area, and we both taught at Mason City Schools in Mason, Ohio. We started working together to help teachers integrate science and literacy nearly 20 years ago. Our first book series is titled Picture Perfect Science Lessons. These books contain lessons that integrate science and literacy through the use of high quality science related picture books. Our newest books, Picture Perfect STEM Lessons for K2 and 3-5, contain lessons that integrate literacy with the STEM disciplines. Once again, featuring wonderful picture books that make reading and writing meaningful while students are engaged in the STEM disciplines. In addition to the Picture Perfect Science and Picture Perfect STEM series, we also co-wrote Teaching Science Through Trade Books with Dr. Christine Royce. We're both former elementary teachers and curriculum specialists. We facilitate science workshops together nationwide, although lately we do them through Zoom, and we're both children's book authors. My first picture book is called Nature Did It First, Engineering Through Biomimicry. And it's great for introducing young readers to biomimicry, which is the practice of looking to nature for inspiration to help solve engineering challenges. It's part playful rhymes and part nonfiction. And I'm the author of the Next Time You See nonfiction picture book series from NSTA Kids. Each book features a natural object with the idea that the next time you see that natural object after reading the book, you will see it in a whole new way. And my latest release in that series is Next Time You See a Bee. And I also just released a book called Never Stop Wondering, which is a poem about questioning. So Picture Perfect STEM has three main components, picture books, the five E's, and the STEM disciplines. The largest gear here in this diagram is STEM because science and engineering standards and practices, technology and mathematics drive our lessons. Everything else, the picture books, reading strategies, 5e model, work together to support student learning of STEM concepts. And these STEM disciplines are at the heart of our lessons. The 5e model, um, sometimes called the 5e learning cycle, is a constructivist model of learning where students have an opportunity to explore concepts before they get the explanations. The five stages of the model are engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. And evaluate is in the middle of the learning cycle graphic because a skillful teacher evaluates student understanding throughout the cycle. But each of our lessons does contain a formal evaluation piece at the end. And of course, the picture books. Picture books, both fiction and nonfiction, make STEM learning more engaging and meaningful. We like the way reading experts Stephanie Harvey and Ann Goodvis describe the power of picture books. They say picture books, both fiction and nonfiction, are more likely to hold our attention and engage us than reading dry formulaic text. Engagement leads to remembering what is read, acquiring knowledge, and enhancing understanding. So with everything we do, we really want to try to tap into that magic, the magic of picture books to make STEM concepts more meaningful for children. Our program is structured around read alouds. There are a lot of good reasons to use read alouds in a STEM lesson. One reason is that reading aloud gives you the opportunity to model the reading strategies of a proficient reader. And we suggest a whole variety of reading comprehension strategies to model as you share the book, specific questions to ask, or activities for the students to do as they listen. And for students who struggle with word-by-word -word reading, experiencing a book as a listener can free their minds to concentrate on the science or engineering concepts being presented. And Finally, research shows that being read to is the single most important activity for future reading success. 
Reading comprehension strategies from Strategies That Work by Stephanie Harvey and Ann Goodvis are embedded throughout the read alouds in all picture perfect lessons. These strategies are probably familiar to you, making connections, questioning, visualizing, inferring, determining importance and synthesizing. And they're used where appropriate in each lesson and they're seamlessly embedded into the 5e model. So let's get into the lesson. This lesson is chapter eight in our book, Picture Perfect STEM K2, although it could be adapted for other grades. We start with the picture book, Beep Beep Go to Sleep, written by Todd Tarpley and illustrated by John Rocco. I'll share a few pages of the story so you can get the gist. Three little robots, time for bed. Time to dim your infrared. Quiet at last, not a peep. Three little robots are, what do you think the next page is gonna look like? Beep, beep. And so the book goes on where the boy keeps settling into bed and the robots keep interrupting him with beep, beep until he finally figures out what they want. A bedtime story. Somewhere there are robots beeping, buzzing, bouncing, squawking, squeaking, blipping, bopping, blinking, boinking, winking, whirring, even winking. But not these robots snuggled deep. They finally put their boy to sleep. more to the story. This was just a few pages of a 32 page picture book. To teach this lesson remotely, you can get a copy and make a recording of yourself reading it so that it's available only to your students, or you could read it live to your students, which I'm sure they would enjoy. Or there is a video read aloud from the San Jose Public Library's We Share Stories program. Uh, the link for this is on the Padlet. Of course, your students would probably most prefer you reading the book aloud, either live or recorded, but this is available if you need it. So you may be wondering about the legalities of recording yourself doing read aloud. So we wondered the same thing. So we did a little research and we found a really good article that we have posted on the Padlet. But the article says that posting online read alouds during the coronavirus emergency does constitute fair use. But do be careful to restrict access and further distribution to the public. And to do that, you can use your school's LMS, a school-based or a teacher-maintained website, or a private YouTube channel. And as always, when um, recording yourself doing a read aloud, credit the author and illustrator. And remember, we are not legal experts. So after the read aloud, we ask questions that lead students to start thinking about the cross-cutting concept of structure and function. So for example, what job do you think the robots in the book were designed to do? And there's some clues throughout, but um, we can figure out that they were probably designed to take care of the boy or entertain the boy. So the students learn that every robot is designed for a specific job and that job determines what it looks like. Then we ask, do most robots look like the ones in the book? Well, actually most robots do not look like the cute little slightly humanoid looking robots in the book. Most robots used in industry today look like this. A moving arm program to do a particular job like sorting, packing, welding, painting, things like that. So next we tell the students that they're gonna do a fun activity to model how these industrial robot arms work. The student on the right is the programmer and she will read the robot program to the robot arm. The student on the left is the robot arm. It will do the job it is programmed to do. And the folder is used to keep the, the student from seeing her hand because our robot arm doesn't have visual sensors. So let's see what job our robot arm is programmed to do. Okay, robot, I'm gonna put the pasta in the bowl.
Okay, robot. Step one, pick up a piece of pasta from the bowl. Step two, if the pasta feels like a spiral, then place it to the left of the bowl or else place it to the back of the bowl. Step three, if any pasta is still in the bowl, then go to step one or else end program. Hooray! So as you can see from the video, our robot arm is being programmed to sort pasta. So after the task is completed, the students will want to switch roles because everybody wants to be a robot arm. So we do that and then we talk about the parts or structures on the robot arm that helped it do its job. And the great thing about this activity is that you can teach students that every robot is programmed to do a specific job and that job determines what it looks like. And students only need a folder, a bowl, and some pasta to do this at home. So let's take a closer look at the program that our programmer was reading. Uh, many types of computer programs are similar to this one, a series of logical statements that include words such as if, then, else, go to, and, so you might want to give students the opportunity here to write another simple program for a robotic arm, something like uh, maybe sorting and placing different shaped blocks into containers. So we wanted to show students a video of real robot arms in action. And this is from Fanuc Robotics and it shows robot arms picking and placing chocolates in a chocolate factory. So we asked students to compare their robot arm that they modeled in the robot arms activity to the real robots in the video. And the link for this video is also on the Padlet. Next, we share the book National Geographic Kids Robots by Melissa Stewart, where we learn what a robot is, the many kinds of robots there are, and the various jobs that robots do. So what's a robot? What do you think of when you hear the word robot? A blinking, walking, robo-talking metal person? Some robots really do look like people, but most don't. And you can see in the picture that there's a ping pong playing robot that looks like a human, but on the right is a model of a Mars rover, which looks nothing like a human. A robot or bot is a machine that has movable parts and can make decisions. People design it to do a job by itself. So we can think back to the robot arm that we modeled and ask the questions, did our model have movable parts? And yes, it had movable parts, uh, movable wrists and arm joints and fingers. Could it make decisions? Yes, it had to decide where to put the pasta and when to end the program. And it could do the job by itself once it was programmed. So we stop reading the book there and we talk about how every robot is designed for a specific job and that job determines what the robot looks like. 
So students get these cards and have to match the picture of the robot to the job description. All of these robots are mentioned later in the reading, so sorting the cards beforehand gives them something specific to listen for as you read. Then they have the opportunity to resort the cards after the reading. So if we take a look at number one, this robot arm welds together metal parts in a factory. Which picture do you think shows that robot? Or number two is slightly easier. It says this eight-legged robot, big hint, was designed to explore an active volcano. So which robot do you think that is? So if you are doing this lesson remotely, um, there's different ways that you can do this activity. You will get a PDF of the lesson. So um, you can show that on your screen. You could have kids use the annotate tool to um, circle the robot that, that you are describing. Um, and if you have any other ideas for how to do this activity with the PDF of these pages, go ahead and write it down in the chat. So then we go back to the book and we read about robots at work, robots at home, and my favorite, robots in space. Then we go back to the cards and the kids can resort them based on what they learned from the reading. And this really gets into that cross-cutting concept of structure and function and designed objects. Simply put, the parts a robot has is related to the job it does. So you can see that number one was robot F. And number two, you probably guessed right, was robot E. And so we place them all where they go. and go back to the book. So then we read the last page about robots of the future. And we tell the students that they're gonna have the opportunity to be roboticists. And roboticists are engineers who design, build, program, um, and test robots. So students will be designing their very own robot with the purpose of solving a human problem or meeting a human need in their own home or classroom. And the first thing they do is brainstorm the jobs that a robot could do in their home or classroom. Next, students work in small groups to come up with an idea for a robot that could do a job in their home or classroom. And together, they design an advertisement for their robot on chart paper. They come up with the robot's name, describe its job, and draw the parts that would help the robot do its job. So what job would your classroom robot do? Go ahead and type in the chat. If you could design a robot to do one job in your classroom, what would it be? So here's a few student examples, the cleanie bot and the homework bot. And art can be easily integrated into this activity. These students built their own non-working prototypes of robots out of recycled materials. So there are many variations of the engineering design process. So in this one, the students first identified a problem. Um, the problem was actually provided for them, design a robot to do a job in the home or classroom. Then they brainstormed their ideas then um, for designing, we just had them sketch the ideas. And then for the build and test and evaluate and redesign section, we actually didn't do that part, but you don't have to include every step of the design process in every lesson. We recommend focusing on creation for final assessments when teaching remotely. So something like this could be done using an app like Flipgrid. I'm Izzy, and I invented the trash bot. This takes the place of a broom and dustpan and picks up the garbage or toys that you left on the ground. It replaces a broom and dustpan, and it scoops up the toys if they're on the floor. Each lesson in our Picture Perfect STEM books includes a STEM at home student page that provides a way for students to involve their families in STEM learning at home. Students can share what they learned and what their favorite part of the lesson was. 
and then they do an activity or watch a video with their family to extend the learning. For this particular STEM at home, we found a video that features an engineer that designed one of the robots featured in that National Geographic robots book. His name is Sandeep Yayathi and he works on Robonaut 2. My name is Sandeep Yayathi and I'm a robotics engineer at NASA Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. This is Robonaut 2. Um, he's a very friendly robot to work around. Robonaut 2 is a uh, humanoid robot uh, that we developed to assist astronauts in space on various different types of tasks. And eventually, uh, we'd like to see this robot uh, going EVA, which is outside in space. Perhaps if we're exploring another surface, like the moon or Mars or an asteroid, um, you could send a robot like Robonaut out ahead of an astronaut to maybe kind of assess the situation or go into an area that may be sort of questionable for safety and too dangerous for a crew member. He's both able to have the dexterity of a human, but also has a lot of strength. Robonaut 2 has the arm span of uh, Yao Ming and biceps of Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime. But the difference is Schwarzenegger uh, can't hold this weight out uh, at full arm's length indefinitely. Um, so we studied the human anatomy and the hands and, and used that as a, as a jumping point for designing this, this robotic system. That was one of the biggest challenges in this robot. So uh, the robot uh, likes to show off his guns from time to time. About the same as a human being. I guess as a kid, you know, you, you always think about NASA exploring space as being you know, so up there and so far out that maybe it's not really a reachable goal. Kind of like you might think, uh, I could never be like a Hollywood movie star sort of thing. And all of a sudden it just kind of a switch flip that you know, NASA's like maybe working at another company or anywhere else except for the fact that it's got all these awesome goals. Best part of my job is that we get to see the entire design process. So I go from being at a desk doing design work on a computer to to assembling things on a workbench right behind me and then testing those things, making sure they work. Going from uh, you know, being a kid fooling around with stuff at home all the way to now you know, working here, this is my job, uh, it's, it's pretty incredible. I mean, I, I would have never really thought that I would end up here, but uh, it's just a matter of uh, learning the right skills and following your dream. So that was just a clip of the video. Um, there's a lot more to it. And we included that as well on our Padlet. And so here's that Padlet we've been talking about this whole time. All the resources we shared are available here. And we'll put the link in the chat. And we'll also follow up with an email with that link, just in case you lose track of it after our session. So we'd like to share our website where we have more information about our program, including upcoming events, additional resources, and correlations to state and national standards. So our website is just pictureperfectscience.com. And guess what? That link is also on the Padlet. Um, Karen and I usually travel all over the country doing Picture Perfect workshops, but now we're doing all of our workshops online. Uh, we have five scheduled for 2021, and you can check our website for the dates and details. We also have a train the trainer option for those interested in conducting their own Picture Perfect STEM trainings in your school or district. So if you'd like to learn more about Picture Perfect, contact your state's NSTA sales rep and you can find that link on the Padlet. They can guide you to all the best resources to get you started using Picture Perfect. You can purchase trade book collections, the lesson books, class packs of all the materials you need to teach a lesson, lessons by grade level, and even individual lesson modules that contain a lesson booklet, the two read aloud books, and a whole class pack of materials. So these are all great ways to get started with Picture Perfect. And um, a supplemental book of just those student activity pages is now available in Spanish. So feel free to email us with questions or use the contact form on our website. We'd also like to invite you to join our Facebook group called Friends of Picture Perfect Science and um, follow us on Twitter as well.